I am Blair Penry. I am the 2024 Washington State Teacher of the Year. This project I'm really excited. I'm going to be working with three different teachers at three different levels, so elementary, middle, and high school, and their students, and really getting a chance to dive in and showcase what is just amazing about their classrooms. What are students experiencing in classrooms that are doing that really well? And so through this project, we're gonna be able to highlight those strategies, those best practices, and also just show the happiness that comes from learning in a, an environment, in a community where students are able to be their authentic selves. Hi, uh, my name is Katie Asari, and um, I work here at Peaches on Skill Center in the Highland School District. How did Teaching Academy come to be? Yeah. Because this is an incredible program. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I'm really excited about it. So whenever my credit recovery program got closed, mm -hmm. um, I was talking to Mr. Lozano, our principal, and he just kind of said, what do you want next? Like, what, what would a dream be? Mm. And he casually said something about Teaching Academy in passing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Could you repeat that? Yeah. <laughs> what, are, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. um, and so from that day forward, I was like, I want a Teaching Academy. I want to be able to work with kids who want to work with other students yeah. and become a teacher or a paraeducator or a coach or any. There's so many different ways to be involved in education. Yeah. But I really love the idea of working with kids who want to be in education. And I think it's really important to make sure that the kids in our community yes. know that they can be teachers. Absolutely. And I think so often, though, not every kid feels like they get invited into the profession. And I feel like that's one of the main goals of Teaching Academy is saying, like, I don't, any student in the Highland School District or any school district, you could be a teacher if you want to be. Yes. And, like, you're invited into this profession and we want you to be a part of it. And so just getting to work with that and make sure that every kid can see themselves as a teacher if that's something that they want. I love that um, so much. Yeah. <laughs> And it's, it's a deeply personal message mm -hmm. for me because I grew up in a space that I didn't see anybody yeah, who looked like me totally. right, as a teacher and, and didn't realize that I could be a teacher. Like yeah. when you don't see anybody that represents you yeah. in an occupation, it's really hard to yeah. imagine yourself there. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And so it is profoundly important. And thank, thank you. you so much for speaking to it. So I feel like it was like, a big move to try and get people to be more thoughtful about their choices and how they affect them. So speaking about the space that you create yeah. and the community that you create with your students, mm -hmm. can you talk about what your process is that from the beginning of the year and the intentionality that you very clearly put along the way? Because yeah. it doesn't stop. I can see that. Uh, so yeah. what's your method? Yeah. And I've got some real concrete answers because I am a teacher and I have, you know, we've all had conversations where they're helpful in some way, mm -hmm. but don't let me walk away with concrete. Right. Here's ideas. And so I think one thing is I always make sure there's pictures of my life in the classroom. Yeah. Um, I think it's important that they get to see pictures of my family, pictures of mm -hmm. the people I spend time with, my pets, yes. you know, that I'm a human being and they're a human being and that we all come as these complex people, right? Yes. I'm not just school Miss Asari, right? Mm -hmm. Like I have my own life and I think that's important for them to see. Yeah. And so I always make sure that stuff is up in the classroom when they come in the very first day. Yeah. Um, I think we do something called 10 minute life stories, which is a really important activity. And actually it happened because someone walked up to me one time and asked me my 10 minute life story. And I was like, wow, what? that's a cool idea. And so we did. It is a cool idea. I gave idea. the person my 10 minute life story. They gave me theirs. And I walked away and I was like, that's really cool. Wow. I should do that more often in And this my was life. just like a, a, like at a conference or like yeah, a random. Was, yeah, I was at a conference. And wow. I was just like, oh, that's a really cool idea. Yeah. To find a partner and tell your 10 minute life story. Mm -hmm. But kids are involved. So I was like, well, they might need yeah. more structure. So what we do is we first as teachers and anyone who works with my students. So paraeducators. Okay. Um, this year we had our inclusive education specialist, Ms. Shauna Moore, Dean came and gave her 10 minute life story. Yes. Um, we all have all the adults that might come in and out of the room, come give a 10 minute life story. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can do it however you want. I usually do a little Google slides presentation with some pictures and, yeah. and just, and the adults 10 minutes always turns into 20 minute life story. Of course. You know, that's okay. We um, have some years. Yes. Like, we have a lot to offer. We have some chapters to go through. For sure. And so we usually do one a day. So mm -hmm. for the first like week of school, they get to hear from a different adult every day about their life. Love and it's really cool to see how vulnerable a lot of the adults are willing to get and share some hard stuff that have happened to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just so kids know they're not alone. That like. Life isn't easy. And mm -hmm. then we ask the students to prepare a 10-minute life story presentation. And we take volunteers. Mm -hmm. So you, like, start with the kids who are most willing and yep. eager. <laughs> right? Yep. Um, and I will say 
my students are incredible and they really went to a level of vulnerability I did not expect. Mm. And the very first student like shared about some physical disabilities they have that are not necessarily visible, mm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and right away it really set the tone. And then every day we would get a different time in life story. So it takes like a couple weeks, but it's so Perfect. nice to every day yes. start the day hearing about someone's life in mm -hmm. the room and getting to really know them. And some students share more deeply than others and that's okay. Yep. I don't force anybody to share something they don't want to share. Mm -hmm. So that's one that I think is a really important way to start the year. Yeah. Um, I love that it's continual, right? Yeah. It's not the first week we get everything done and then we never no. revisit this again. Like this is over weeks. This is yeah. time that we are investing in you mm -hmm. and in each other. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's so important. Mm -hmm. And then we also started doing class meetings. So once a week we have a class meeting. Um, and it I think it's often thought of as an elementary strategy. I'm a mm. big believer that like almost everything we do in elementary, we can do at the high school level. Yes. And it is beneficial to students. It is. I think we act like, oh, well, they're going to think it's dumb. They might. They're I mean, they kids. kind of eye roll at me a little bit. And that's fine. They're still They're kids. teens. Right? <laughs> if they do it with an eye roll, I'm like, great. You still right? did what I asked. You did it. Like, I, I don't care. <laughs> yes. I'm immune to eye rolls. And so. You're going to have to be to be a high school teacher. For sure. And a middle school teacher. I would agree. Like, yeah. So we like sit in a circle and we have a talking piece. It's a talking Toby. It's a little crocheted dinosaur student made me. Um, that we named it together and we wrote norms. <laughs> yeah, that's talking so Toby. Great. And we wrote no norms for our class meetings. Mm -hmm. And um, we ask a question and then we just pass around talking Toby. And you can pass or you can choose to answer. Mm -hmm. um, we don't pressure people who choose to pass and we yeah. just go around the circle. And I think easy ones to start with, we started with aha, gratitude, or compliment. And so you got to pick, do you want to share an aha, like something that really – you yeah. realized this week or whatever, do you want to share a gratitude for someone in the room or do you want to ask for a compliment? Because mm -hmm. it's okay to ask people to give you a compliment if you're having a hard day. Yeah. And so that's often how I we kind of started. Because it, it's mm -hmm. a, it's real easy. You get to pick one of the three. And then sometimes we do more silly questions like, do you believe in ghosts? Ooh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Why or why not? Which was a fun, hot topic. Yeah. Just that. stuff like that. And then we also like have asked some pretty deep ones like mm – -hmm. If you could tell your parents anything and they were would listen, what would you say to them? Yeah. You know, or – and that one really opened up a big conversation about people's having trouble with their parents. And mm -hmm. and that one I think was one of the ones that really pivoted to become more of a problem-solving circle where kids were actually sharing what was going on with their parents and wow. the conflicts they were having and – People were sharing advice with each other. So I think the thing about class meeting that is special is it's also encouraging peer-to-peer -peer interactions. Yes. Because it's not just teacher-to-peer, right? I think that's a big piece is like I think a lot of times we spend a lot of time connecting with our students teacher-to-student, which is important. But we also need to set up spaces for kid-to-kid -kid interactions. Absolutely. So I think class meeting is a really big one um, on that front. And then we do Where I'm From poems mm -hmm. as part of our cultural identity unit. Yeah. So they got to write a poem about where they're from. I wrote a poem where I'm from. We all – and we had, like, a cute little poetry share. We, like, turned the lights off and lit candles yes. and had a charcuterie board. And, like, snaps. oh, yes, we were yes. snapping. <laughs> oh, I had a wave light projector. It was, like, <laughs> <laughs> we really made it cute. I love um, that. And people got to share their poems and read their poems aloud. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really sweet. And that, I mean, takes time again where we were reading poems, we were looking at them, we're writing them. Um, but and you're then investing in that time again. Totally. It's what we invest in. And, yeah. 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 And then, oh, daily warm-ups. So every day there's a warm-up. And for the first, like, month or two of school, I led them. Mm -hmm. um, but then students started signing up. And now students lead the warm-up and the brain break every day. So every day we have warm-up led by students. And we do – there's a lot of different options. Mm -hmm. I, we actually have a whole document we made of different ones so that if they're stuck, they can That's look great. at it. Yeah. Um, but, like, verses is one I made where you, like – Make a Google Slides with two cute animals, and they have to pick which one's cuter, you know? Or, like, Coke and Pepsi. Yep. Tacos and sandwiches. Or I don't know. Whatever you want to put on there. Yeah. Um, and they just vote with their hands. Or bop or flop, where I play a song, and if you like it, you raise your hand, and if you hate it, you put your hand up. That's All right. It. I dig <laughs> it. It's called bop or flop. So just a bunch of silly warm-ups like that, but they start the day together. Mm -hmm. I think it brings a moment of unity yeah. Um, and then students get to start leading them. So then they get to start using their voice and picking which ones they like the best. And then brain breaks. We have two and a half hour blocks. So I think it's really important to get them up, moving, interacting. Oof, yeah, out of the chair. I as an adult don't want to be sitting for two yeah. and a half hours. So I can only imagine, right? Like, yeah, we got to move. For sure. So those are some of the like big ones that come to mind when I think about concrete activities mm -hmm. or like structures in my classroom that I think really support connections among students. Yeah. It's not a hard. Oh, uh, 
so what is it like being in a classroom where you feel like your teacher knows and really respects you? The teacher actually talks to you like about you, mm -hmm. you know, like they don't start talking about like stuff that doesn't have to do nothing with you, you know, like, oh, how are you doing your personal life? How are, how are you feeling like you personally? How are you feeling like, is there anything I can help you with? Do you want me to make this like assignment longer for you more time? Mm -hmm. Like I can help you like asking questions like how are you feeling? It's like, I feel like that's and the one big question is how you're feeling. Yeah. It makes me feel seen. You know what I mean? That. So that's what I like about PSC a lot is that it makes you feel seen a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Why did you become a teacher? I think it's such a good question, such a big one. <laughs> right when you first said it, I was like, why? ooh. Yeah. I was like, that is a big question. <laughs> yeah. um, I think for me, I think a few different things come up in my mind, right? I think one of them kind of relates to what we were just talking about. I think that I know that school systems mm -hmm. were not built for everyone. That's right. I know that school systems don't reflect everyone in our oh, communities. Yeah. And I think as a teacher, I think part of my role is to try to make sure we're actively changing that. Yes. <laughs> and to try to make a safe or at least a brave space, right? I don't know mm -hmm. that we can always guarantee a safe space for people, yeah. but I wanna make a brave space in my classroom so that people can really feel like they can be their best mm -hmm. and can see a future that maybe they didn't always imagine for themselves. I really love the brave space versus mm -hmm. safe space. I think yeah. a lot of times when we talk about safe spaces, it defaults or defaults to whiteness. Yeah. Right, a safe and comfortable place yes. that whiteness can maintain its yeah. presence. Mm -hmm. um, and so to separate those two, I think yeah. is really important. For right? sure. This is a brave space. This is a space that we are going to build community where we're unafraid to be yeah. uncomfortable. Uh, because yes. growth is uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable. Like, that's why it's they call so it like the learning hard. Pit, right? Like it's yeah. hard, it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, I appreciate you yeah. separating those two things. And for I think sure. As educators, like we need to acknowledge that, right? Like safe yeah. is not the same for everybody. No. And when we say we're gonna make this a safe space, most of the time, yeah, we default to something that really isn't safe for everybody. I would agree. Mm -hmm. And so that's my hope, is that we make brave spaces for kids to be able to grow and develop and see themselves in places they might not have before. Yeah. And just to be able to recognize their potential. Because I know that every child is capable of learning. Mm -hmm. I know that every child wants to learn. Yes. <laughs> even if it doesn't appear like that mm -hmm. on the outside in the beginning. Um, and just, I think that's my goal. It's just to help kids see that in themselves, even if maybe they don't in the beginning.